time for the visit with the person of high strangeness. We have an exciting show for you today. Um, this is the second one where we discuss the Tri Lakes uh, UFO conference that took place in um, November of 2003. Eventually, there's going to be uh, one more kind of like a summary. The first one we have had Dr. Jordan, um, Gilbert Jordan on it himself. Now, today we have a lot of inserts, so I'm not going to linger because we're going to Kimberling City, Missouri. And as soon as we queue up, I have no announcements or anything. I just want to take you there and kind of revisit some of the things that we did in, the, in, the, in November of 2003. And uh, Kimberling, Kimberling City. Enjoy. And uh, at the resort here where the conference, conference took place. As you, as you can see, as you can see, it's Washington weather. It's all drizzly and foggy. And this is the big parking lot here. There's a lake on the other side here, except you can't see it. Uh, it's really been foggy. And so we're going to go into Papa Grande's here. It's a little, little Mexican restaurant. I'm going to find me a cup of coffee. Yet, so come right along. I think I'm in the right place. There's a flying saucer here. So here we are. Chief in too, come y'all, chiefed out. You're like chiefed now. Yeah, chiefed out. Chief out. Chief out. Chief out. <laughs> There's a lot of happy people so early in the morning, I don't even know who I am. Yeah. Football. Look what I found. I know who they are. Look who I found, Bob White. Monica Vian. Kanashi Bushan. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. And Barbara McGuire. Good morning. Tom Burke, by the way, the one that got all the money from this little optic. Oh, it's over. Uh, uh. <laughs> There's been a sighting. <laughs> this is me. This is me. This is for peace. Oh, 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 okay. Now, I don't know what this is all about. It'll be interesting. Hang on. See, this is me and my son and the alien. This is me and the, my baby, the piece. Uh huh. And then here's a piece of my baby. Oh. So. A baby meaning Bob White's object. Yeah, our baby. Uh -huh. Well, it ain't Bob's no more. I just let him keep it. And all of this is because of this. Really? Yep. Explain. Oh, real quickly, I was really broke. I touched the piece, and now I've got two biz well, three businesses, two homes, 11 acres, and loving life. Oh, how are you doing? Really? All because of the luck of the draw. Pretty good. And I won a bunch on lottery because of it. Oh, you won the lottery? Yeah, I won uh, about a, I almost won almost 100 bucks since the day before yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. He said. Mine. Can't see the cheeks. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, Dr. Gibbons. Hi, uh, good morning. Yeah, he oh. says he's an early riser. He Hi. was in the middle of a wonderful conversation with me about his son, Robert, the one we talked What's about. Wrong, Mr. Well, we got Robert back from Iraq, and now his older brother, Jim, has been activated in his reserve unit and very possibly will go over to Iraq, too. Uh -huh. So we're quite concerned about him. And, Thanksgiving holidays coming up. I was planning to uh, to drive to uh, Fort Stewart, Georgia, at Savannah, to spend the holidays with Robert. But uh, now, with his brother going to uh, be activated, Robert's going to try to come back. I think, and so that's going to change our plans. But. Wow! I don't know. If, if I, I I was in the middle of my conversation, and it's so early in the morning. I didn't know who I was, and I just left you standing there talking. Oh. And I swapped off. No, I was I was. I don't know if Doctor Gibbs told you that, but. He was over in Iraq too. He was a desert tribe. Yeah, I know. Yeah, it's, it's an interview. Yeah. And his kid goes over there. For yeah. Now the second, second one's going. Now over. the second one's going. Yeah. Over. So, but it was pretty, uh, pretty certain that uh, 
James's unit was the last unit in Springfield that had not been activated. And now they're re actually recycling the units because they're staying in Iraq longer than they thought they were going to do. And so I was pretty sure he was going to have to go. Now he's uh, he's the one that trained with Jessica Lynch at uh, mm -hmm. uh, Fort Jackson, South Carolina, and Fort Lee, Virginia. Yeah, because, yeah. And they're the same specialty. They're automated logistics specialists. And so that means he's, a, he's in a supply sort of unit like Jessica was. And uh, we're hoping that, uh, in fact, Robert hopes that maybe at this point that they will uh, they will stay in the United States, their unit will stay in the United States and replace an active duty unit that will go overseas. Because the reserves are, uh, there's a lot of criticism that the reserves aren't getting enough medical attention and things like that. So right now all we know is he's activated. Uh, he'll go on active duty probably for a year. Financially, for him, that's a good deal. You get uh, you get your expenses paid. Real soldier for you there. Right. He is thinking about nothing except the benefits. <laughs> right. I I retired. Yeah. That's what I. I that's I my whole. I have come closer yeah. because it's so noisy. I retired from uh, from 21 and a half years in the military back in February. Yeah. And I draw my military retirement and uh, my ex-wife. Uh, turns out that since we were married for 20 years, she gets uh, my, my, my benefits like we were married. So she had eye surgery, she had uh, cataract removal, uh, financed through uh, my military uh, benefits, which is good. That she, she almost lost her eyesight totally, was almost blind, and now she's uh, recovered her eyesight, so that's really good. My son John is in uh, Rolla at the uh, University of Missouri at Rolla. He's a, going into computer software engineering, and he didn't want to do the military until he got out of college. Then he'll get a direct commission and, and he'll go in the military. But he didn't want to interrupt his college at this point. And my youngest son Presley's just 10 years old, so he's uh, he doesn't really understand a lot of this with his brothers gone and coming back and reunions and all that stuff. So. Uh, I'm, I'm hoping that the family can be together for Thanksgiving because it'll probably be a year before Jim will be back if he goes overseas. But no. today's the spook light. Today's my presentation of the spook light. No wonder you're so happy. With, uh, <coughs> with your uh, Sean's revolutionary footage that we shot last year. That it's really good, huh? Oh, it's well. That opened a whole new uh, um, it, it's world. So loud. Spook I, it's so loud. Yeah. Uh, excuse me, hon. hang on, just a minute. Let me finish my interview real quick. I don't know how you're going to recreate all four of those lights. Don't know yet. I don't know. I've got to find where the other three come from first. Right. But uh, we're going to show the footage, and then uh, I've got the footage that was taken back uh, the first motion picture footage that showed the light that was used on the television show Real People. I was thinking about it last night. Uh, we shot additional footage that didn't survive. My friend uh, Fred Schweitzer died in 1996 at the age of 53 and his wife got all of his stuff and then she remarried and we don't know where his all the, the films and all he did where, where that's ended up. But we shot another film in uh, must be about 1959 of the Spook Light, the first actual movie, moving pictures of it at all. It was shot on Tri-X black and white film. But that's in his collection, and I don't know if that's even still safe. But then we went back and shot the Spook Light in color film, uh, real-time color film, and that's what was used on the NBC show Real People. So I'm excited and, and uh, to share all this new footage with everybody. It's so noisy. I don't know if this yeah. time on or, or not. <laughs> okay, we can make noise. What? That's the inside. It's a happy place. Early in the morning. I found my coffee. I'm a happy camper. <laughs> I'm done. Oh, your friend Thank you. is running around like a full head dog. Now the internet is down around. You say you have a freaky story? Well, just a couple of, of museum stories. Uh, you've heard this alien that says, uh, Welcome to Alien Territory. That's one of the things we sell. Well, we have one by the front door, and it operates off of a uh, solar cell when uh, the shadow goes across it. Well, we have a very extensive alarm system in the museum. We have the windows, the doors proximity, all this stuff. So I know when the uh, the door alarms are on, there's nobody has gotten in to the museum. But all of a sudden, one time, that stuff, that little alien starts talking. And that really freaked me out. So I went in to look, 
what had happened was the shadow of the porch had come through the window and had triggered that thing off. That was, that was one of them. The other was we have these inflatable aliens that we used in our uh, advertising around here. We have one of those that stands up uh, in our display, but it leaks air. And it just so happened that uh, we had... It blew a, itself up? <laughs> no, no. It was, we, we blow it up, but it, one of them we had was leaking air. So this is coincidences. Yeah. But they happened to be at the same time. So my first job is to uh, put the money in the cash register. So I have this big wad of money. At that time, we had a big wad of money. And I hear this tapping. Again, the alarms are on. You know, there's yeah. nobody who's come in. What it turned out to be was a piece of the, of the molding, the trim right above this alien had come loose and it was just tapping, ready to fall off. <laughs> and as I walk into the, to see what the tapping is, you know, pretty well scared, lights are out. The alien falls onto the floor and I threw the money up in the, in the, in the, in the air and ran out the back door. You did. And I forgot about the money and here comes Bob in and we, go, we always go through the museum out the front door to go get coffee at the restaurant. Yeah. And he says, what is all this money on the floor? I said, well, that's where the alien scared me this morning. He says, well, if the alien scares you, pick the money up first, then get out of here. So, so that's, the, that's, that's, the, that's our two story. stories. If you want to turn, you. just come in here and I'll, I'll trigger the aliens. <laughs> That's the sensor. Now you imagine in the dark, you just woke up, you hear that thing talking, and you know nobody else is in the building with you. Yeah. And that thing talks to you. Thank you for the story. <laughs> oh, here's another one real quick. Oh, there's another one, okay. The day I got that, I, the fellow I, I got the alien from, from the exit. He, uh, he's a night person, so I, I was, it was about 10 or 11 at night, and I'm taking this back. Now it's in my car, and I'm not really thinking about it. <laughs> Well, then I get out. We have, in the back of the museum, we have a big uh, sort of a street light or floodlight that illuminates the whole back. So I'm walking down <laughs> with this thing under, with uh, my arm around it, and I see my shadow, human, and then that big head shadow, and that really did freak me out for a minute until I thought, now, come on, Robert, that's a rubber statue. There's no alien behind you chasing you down. But anyway, just stuff like that, you can get caught up into this stuff. To, yeah. yeah. Up here, and um, now this was some of the fun stuff uh, that we did at the Tri Lakes. And now the next def next clip is of two speakers that we make reference to a lot. One one is John Greenwald, the young man that runs the Black Vault, that consists of over 110 docu blacked out documents from from the government under the uh, Freedom of Information Act. And the next speaker right after him is Stedman Friedman. And um, of course, you all know who he is. He is, uh, well, he's just everywhere between here and just, Stedman is just everywhere. And so we're going to um, uh, do interviews with two 